need, might need to be turned. Might be winter, in which case you can turn it all you want. It's not going to heat up. But um, if it's not heating up, it may be that all those aerobic bacteria who have been working on it have used up all the oxygen. And they're telling you, turn the pile, you turn the pile, and it heats up again. One other cause of a pile with a low temperature that won't heat up when you turn it is you've got finished compost. That's one of the uh, ways that we can tell when our compost is finished, besides looking at it. If you turn it and turn it and nothing happens, it's letting you know it's done. Use it. Let it set for another couple of weeks, but then use it. What if it's damp in the middle and just warm? Maybe your pile's not big enough. You've got to add more material so that it can get hot in the middle. Because a small pile will never get hot. It'll just get warm. So you may have to increase the size of your pile, which can be easier said than done if you don't have the materials. If the center of it is dry, you may have too much woody material in there. And it just may not have been watered or you know, had water added to it, in which case, put some water in it or, and or add some green materials. Should I use a bioactivator? I always loved this one. Our professor, Professor Gouin from the uh, University of Maryland, who was the compost guru there, he said, well, you can take your $10 and go to Home Depot, go to the big box store and buy your bioactivator. Or you can save yourself the trouble and just take that $10 bill and put it in your compost pile. <laughs> because that $10 bill has got all the micro, microbes on it that you need to start that compost pile. Hmm. Use a $1 bill. Don't bother with a $10 bill. The $1 has got just as many microbes on it. Should I cover it? Again, that's a yes or no. If you leave it uncovered, rain will come down, either get it too wet, possibly, or it can get too dry. And if it gets too wet, of course, it can be washing nutrients out. I think it's, it's sort of a good idea. I, in a lot of cases, I can't, uh, covering it keeps a lot of the rainwater out and can keep the moisture in. You know, so that you can really have control over the moisture level in your compost bin. But then if you've got a large quantity of materials, you might really need a, a bigger bin, in which case it's, it's harder to keep those covered unless you put a tarp or something on it, which, and it, then it gets a little unsightly. So there are pros and cons to it. Uh, what do I do in cold weather? I think that question came up. What do I do in winter? And my thought is, nothing. You can continue to add your materials as you get them. Add them to your compost bin. But as far as getting out there all the time and turning it, it's not really that necessary. As you add your um, kitchen scraps, you might want to, it's a good idea actually, to incorporate them into the bin so that they're not sitting on the top where they might attract vermin. But as far as really getting out there all the time and turning it, uh, it's not going to really work, when I say work, decompose that quickly in the wintertime because of the temperatures. So just sort of take time off and just add your materials and relax. Get ready and plan on what you're going to do with your compost come spring. I believe that's it. Of course, that's a compost tumbler. That looks like a nice homemade compost tumbler. Actually, this, this is sort of set up that I, I have. I've got a compost tumbler, and I also have, sort of like the earth machine, a nice stationary black tub. When you're having a compost tumbler, they always tell you the best thing to do is you know, fill it up at, all at once. It's like, yeah. And who's got all that material at one time? Well, I stockpile my stuff over the year. Like all winter long, everything's going to go into my little black bin. Come spring, when the temperatures start to warm up, I'm going to move it right into the tumbler all at one time. It'll fill that tumbler up in a couple of weeks. This tumbler is going to have great compost in it. And in the meantime, I'm going to be 
putting new stuff into that one. So I'm stockpiling it in one and then move it all into the compost tumbler. Because if you keep adding materials to your compost tumbler, you're going to have some finished compost and some unfinished compost in the tumbler. And it's never going to get to that point where, you know, you can just take it all out and use it. So uh, this is a three bin system. We have something like this at the Canton Library's Giving Garden where you put all of your materials into the one bin initially. As that starts to break down, say after a month or so, you're going to move this over into the second bin, thereby aerating it. And this, that gives you this bin to start putting new materials into. In another couple weeks or a month, after this is finished breaking down, you put it into your third bin where it's accessible when you need your compost. So you, you just keep adding new materials to the first bin. After it breaks down, it goes into the second bin. When it's pretty much finished composting, it goes into the third bin. Another version on a multiple bin system. The other was made out of chicken wire, and this is just all out of slats. Oh, what that uh, fencing, made out of fencing. Uh, I think this was called the green machine. It's supposed to be, you actually put that in your garden and your organic materials, your compost is going to, pretty much all the nutrients are going to go right into your garden. Well, asparagus. Yum. Now this is a bin with a nice cover on it that'll flip over it. Looks like a good place to be stockpiling your materials. A bin here full of leaves. And this has been brought to you by the Greater Baltimore. Yada, yada, yada. Any questions? Nope. Okay.